I'm burnt out. Very, very burnt out. Not in general, at least I don't think it's in general, but at least in regards to this project and the filming of this project, I'm, I'm done, I'm over. I don't wanna have to make more videos on this. Don't get me wrong, I've had a lot of fun doing this project, but filming any DIY makes it take at least three times longer than it otherwise would. And I just need a break from DIY videos. I, it's incredible to hear me say that. It's incredible to hear those words come out of my mouth, but I genuinely need a break from DIY videos. I'm once again choking the air out of one of my favorite hobbies, and this time I actually need to stop before I kill it. I just wanna do a vlog, or just animals being cute, or, or, or something, something that isn't building things for five minutes. So that being said, this is going to be the last DIY video for this project. Obviously not my last DIY video. Eternally, that could never happen. There will be one more video in this series and that will be the final setup of the enclosure, putting all the bedding in, putting all the toys and supplies and everything where they belong, possibly a small tour, I haven't decided yet. That will be the last episode of the series. Uh, but for today, basically my plan is to cram as many DIYs as I possibly can into this one video so I don't have to do it anymore. I'll also try and remember to timestamp each of the DIYs in this video, so if you do want to come back and see how something was built, it should be easy to find it. And lastly, before we get into this DIY pick and mix, if you want to help support the channel and get yourself some cute merch, head on over to hamsterpie.com. Thank you so much to everyone who's been buying from there lately. A lot of you have been showing the shop a lot of love, and I appreciate that so very much. And now on with the DIYs. Things I've learned this week, grass grows way faster than I anticipated. This is four days of growth from seed. I mean, it's good to know for the future if I ever want like fast plants in my enclosure. Cress is the way to go, apparently. I genuinely thought when I was planting it that it was gonna take at least 10 days to get to this point. What am I supposed to do with this now? I don't have anyone to eat it. I could eat it. Next thing on the checklist is a dig box.
was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. Cause I found my way, I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be okay. Cause I found my way. <laughs> I am old now. I'm fairly certain I was promised that with age comes wisdom. And yet, maybe you have to send off for it or something. Jokes aside, I had a lovely little birthday this year. We headed up to a historical mountain village. Bano Lefkara is famous for its handmade lace and also a very fine, intricate silver work incredible stuff. And my favorite part of the day was of course being able to photograph all the incredible architecture and the streets. Look at these, look at these streets, look at how gorgeous this place is. If you're taking a holiday here in Cyprus and looking for something relaxing to do one afternoon, definitely go and visit this village. Beautiful. Oh, there's a tiny beetle. Hello, Mr. Beetle. See these big things on the end of my legs? Stay away from- No, 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 you're getting closer. They're the opposite. Climb on this tiny piece of paper. Good boy. Oh, it's a tiny beetle. Don't fall. So we have successfully made a fairly good looking dig box, which is currently filled with just regular soil that you can get cheaply from garden centers and the other places that sell plants. I may end up swapping out for coconut fiber if I can find coconut fiber. Unfortunately, it's very hard to get my hands on in my country and buying it from abroad is just out of the question if you saw the shipping prices. Ah. The only downside of using regular soil is that we do have an issue with soil gnats here, which are these tiny, teeny tiny little completely harmless flies. They're just really, really annoying and they live in soil and they get everywhere but I don't have that issue when I use cocoa fiber so I would like to use cocoa fiber to avoid the soil gnats um, but you know beggars can't be choosers and as far as the hamster is concerned it really doesn't matter which one I use so the next DIY I'm gonna be showing you is by far my favorite one in this video it is so heckin cute it's a cloud swing. It did involve cutting out cloud shapes with a jigsaw my least favorite thing to do clouds or any kind of like bumpy Choppy shit. Anyway, I hope you'll find this DIY as adorable and worthwhile as I did. Only thing better than a bendy bridge is a bendy tube. If it wasn't for the fact that these are such a nightmare to clean, they would be on my must-have toy list for rodents. Anyway, I love these things so much that I took one, cut it in half. 50% bend, 100% fun. I didn't just go rogue one evening with a pair of scissors. The reason I've cut this in half is because I realized this would make a perfect hmm, think of the word before you need to say it. Template? Structure? No. Mold, I think is what I'm after. That's a weird sentence. As an A-mold. A mold for building things on. I took my half a bendy tunnel and bent it into a shape that I thought was somewhat interesting, sprayed it down with water, and then used torn up tissue to just layer over the tunnel as much as I could. I think I did uh, about five or six layers in the end. The more layers you do, the more sturdy the final result will be. Left the whole thing to dry, which took about two days for it to dry fully. And then I just peeled the dry tissue off the tube and I was left with this. I made this one with brown kitchen tissue because I thought it looked more natural, which is a weird decision to make given that this is obviously not a natural setup that I'm going for. But most of this is going to be buried under the substrate. Anyway, the only part that will be poking out are the ends of the tubes, which I tilted upwards while it was drying. So it's easier for the hamster to enter it. Uh, and go underground. Anyway, that's just a fun, easy, very budget-friendly DIY, and all you need is a bendy tube, which if you don't have one already, um, they only cost a couple of quid, so 
might be worth the investment. Moving on to the final DIY I'm putting in this video. It's a very short, very simple one. It's a tree shelf. I'm not going to explain it any further than that. You can just watch me make it. And that's it, we're done, we're finished. No more DIYs for this particular project. The cage, done. It's not done, obviously. Like I said, there's one more video to come with the actual final setup. We'll see what the end result will look like. But now my tools are gonna take a well-deserved rest just for a little while. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. Thank you for sticking with this series all the way through. If you have done, well done you. I'm tired, I feel like you must be tired as well. I do genuinely appreciate all the support and all the love you guys have shown throughout this series, uh, but I am, I'm so glad to almost be able to wash my hands of it and move on to some other content. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, come check out my merch shop, follow me on Instagram if you want behind the scenes stuff, which I would recommend given what is about to happen soon. Instagram finds out about things before YouTube finds out about things, so if, if you want to know things first, it's the place to go. And as usual, I will see you guys whenever I see you. Bye!